Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be processing M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. Last week and earlier this week I took a series of photos using my ASI 2600 uh, one-shot color camera along with my TS Optics 90mm CF APO refractor. Now to get my initial image I used WB, the WBPP script here in Pixinsight. Let me load it up here for you. And since I took it over a series of two nights, a total of 38, 38 light frames total, about at 600 seconds each, about six hours and 20 minutes of total exposure. Um, I used WBPP here with some keywords to group these into each night so that I can group the flats with their respective nights. So we're going to get started here. I'm, this is my initial light frame from weighted batch pre-processing. -pre and the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of background extraction to get rid of this green. So I'll open up ABE here. I have these all, all these process icons saved over here, but it's the exact same as going to process and finding them. These are typically the ones that I'm going to use the most. For ABE here, I'm going to set my box size to 20 and my box separation to 20. My function degree is going to be set to 1. And under tar target image correction, I'm going to make sure I have subtraction selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and dis disregard the background model. And it's just as simple as dragging and dropping. And that will remove a little stretch here, our auto stretch. And that'll remove that green background. The next thing I'm going to do is crop this a little bit. You can see I've got some uh, some of the stacking issues, I guess, from doing multiple nights. The, the slight movement in between nights here. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick dynamic crop. All right, now I'm going to color correct this image using Spectro Photometric Color Calibration. For my quantum efficiency curve, I'm going to drop down to this one, the Sony, um, because my sensor on the ASI 2600 MC Pro is the Sony 571 sensor. I'm going to leave background neutralization checked. I'm going to click the region of interest here, and I'm going to find a background area and use this button right here to create a preview of, and I'm going to select a little bit of uh, background here so that this can this process will also neutralize my background for me don't need a whole whole lot of area just a small area and since it's got a few little stars in it I'll move it over here and I might even make this just a little bit smaller well then for the region of interest, we'll then select from preview and make sure that your preview is selected. I'm now ready to use SPCC. Now sometimes when using SPCC, you'll come across, uh, come across this warning right here that there's no uh, valid ast astrometric solution. Uh, to fix that, we're basically going to do a kind of a quick plate solving. We're going to go to script, image analysis, image solver. And I find that you just use all the active windows and just leave this as defaults because it's got a lot of that data built into it already and just hit OK. And then you'll let, uh, let the script do its work here. All right, once that's done, we can just take our triangle here and drop it on here. And now you'll see that it'll color correct the image now that, it, now that the uh, image has been properly solved. All right, I can X out of this, restretch the image. You can see that's been color corrected. We get a little bit more color, a little bit more natural color, still kind of faint and muted, but we're getting there. Um, I don't need my preview anymore, so I can delete that preview. The next thing that I'm gonna do is run Blur Exterminator. And I like to, I've been lately running it just a little bit. Uh, the sharpened stars are anywhere from 15 to 20. Now we can have the Blur Exterminator choose the automatic PSF for us, and so far this process has been working really well. 
or if you want maybe a little bit more accuracy or maybe a little bit better improvement out of your images, you can go to script, go to image analysis, and we'll select the FWHM eccentricity process. Now for this process, we'll need to, before I run it here, we'll need to extract just a luminance layer. So you'll click this button right here and that'll give us just a luminance layer here and I can do a quick auto stretch on it. And what this will do is give us, um, let us know how like, how what our PSF is that we can input in there so that we can um, have a little bit better accurate uh, PSF rather than the automatic one checking it for us. So we'll go back here. All you gotta do is click measure uh, for your image. So for this, it's 2.277 pixels. So I can go back to here and go 2. Point, we'll do 2.28 since it's rounded up. And then all we have to do is just drag and drop. All right, we can see here how that kind of cleaned up the image and made the stars a little smaller. I can um, undo it here and just show you. Kind of just tighten things up a little bit, makes it look a little better. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is a quick histogram transformation and stretch this image from linear to nonlinear. So I'll open up histogram transformation. Make sure I have the correct view selected here. Delete my little auto stretch here. I'll open up the preview window by pushing the circle at the bottom. And now I'll begin stretching the image with the mids first. All right, once you get that image stretched to your liking, take a little bit closer look here. You see a lot of structure in the galaxy. Now that I have this stretched, um, I'm actually going to run a quick noise reduction on it. I'm gonna go to my processes and down to noise exterminator. And just like anything, this normally would default at about 90. I've been running the, this process at about 40, 45. Uh, I find, I'll show you here real quick. If I run it at its default setting, it reduces the noise a little too much for me. It almost makes it look plasticky. So I'll just show you all that here. Certainly did remove the noise, but to me, I just don't like how that's, that's just a little too smooth. So I'm gonna undo that. You can see it brought that noise back up. Now that the process is undone. And I'm gonna run it about half of that. See, that looks a lot better. Still has a lot of detail with a little bit of that kind of grain structure in the background that still kind of gives that little extra detail. So what I'm gonna do now is run Star Exterminator so that I can process my galaxies here uh, without messing with the stars, I'm going to process those separately. Everything is just set here. All you have to do is drag and drop. All right. Um, real quick, before I get started, I'm going to rename these. I'm going to call this one Stars. I'm just going to minimize it, set it over here for now. And I'm going to rename this one to Galaxy. I'm gonna process my galaxy first. The first thing I'm going to do is run a quick curves trans transformation here. I'm gonna select this uh, saturation tab, open up my preview by selecting the circle. And as you can see here, if I slide this up, I can add saturation and color into the image. Obviously that's way too much. I just want a little bit, you're just gonna make subtle changes here at first, just enough to add some blue into the, to those spiral arms of that galaxy. I'll apply that. And I might just bring up the blues just a little bit. Obviously, if you, if you bring the blue in the mid-tones, you're gonna also bring the blue in the shadows. So we're just going to, down here in the shadows, just drop the blues just a little bit. Again. And zoom in here and see what we've got. You can see some of the kind of magenta uh, HA regions, hydrogen alpha regions in the galaxy. 
And for 400 for a 400 millimeter scope, that's <laughs> a lot of detail. I'm actually really surprised with that. Again, it's not a Hubble image or an extreme uh, focal length image, but quite a bit of detail. What I'm going to do next is use some masks to kind of bring out selective colors in this image. Now these masks here are from Bill Blanchett. He has a series of uh, videos uh, I learned learned through um, kind of through him and through another channel, Luke at uh, Luca Matico, uh, showing off these masks that uh, he has. I'll link those down below so you can get these processes. But they're really nice so that you can get these selective details out of the image. A little bit more selective detail out of the image by using mask, and it's as simple as dragging and dropping. As you can see here, that's selected the blue. I can run a quick blur on this here. That'll help kind of make it the mask not too extreme. We'll just drop to, to apply the mask to the image. All you got to do is drag this right here underneath it. Oops, we don't want to close it. We'll hide them. I always put my masks up here. And since we don't want to be staring at red this whole time, we can just click on the mask tab here and put, um, just de-click the show mask. So now I'm going to open up my curves again. Make sure I reset it. Bring this back up. And I'm going to add just a little bit more blue in there. I'm not going to pump it up too much. But now I can pump it up without, I can pump up the blues and the spiral arms without getting a lot of the extra background as well. So you can see here, if I drop the blues, I'm going to add just a little bit more blue to this image. I'm also going to add just a little bit of red. That'll help start to bring in that those HA regions. So about right here. And then with my greens, I'm going to just drop the green just a little bit. Not too much because we'll run some SCNR later. But just a little bit. All right. Click the apply button here. If we zoom in here, you can see what that's done. What a nice color in the galaxy. I'm going to remove this mask by just clicking uh, remove the remove mask button here. And now I can start to see some of these pink areas the, that are the hydrogen alpha. They've kind of pink, almost a magenta color. So I'm going to use a run a magenta mask here. Again, just drag and drop on top of here. And that has created a magenta mask in a lot of these HA regions. So even though we're I'm using a one-shot color camera, we're still with these long 600 second, 10 minute long exposures. I'm still able to pull some of that data out of here. So the, in, in this way, we're just able to kind of extract it, manipulate it a little bit easier. I'm gonna throw this blur on here. And I'm gonna do the same thing, drop this mask onto my galaxy image. My mask is already on there, I already have it hidden. Just put my mask up here. You don't want to X out of the mask at least while they're active because then it will delete them off your image. So again, we're going to go back to the curves transformation. Make sure everything's reset. Open up my circle for the preview. And now what I want to do is add a little bit of more of that red. See if I pop up the red too much here in the center. I've got way too much. Again, every like everything we do is just going to be a subtle change. Just a little bit more red in there. And I'm going to drop my green, I think, a little bit more, too. That'll kind of make a, those regions a little bit more kind of a pink, kind of that pink hue that you see in a lot of galaxy images. So just a little bit. And I might hit up the saturation just a bit more. So I'll try that and apply that. Yeah, that's starting to look good. You can see some of that HA detail if I back up here and undo it. See how that brings it up just a little bit more, just in that pink, those pink regions right there. Very nice. And if you'll notice kind of in the, uh, in between the spiral arms of the galaxy, this yellowish dust, it almost looks green. It does have kind of a green tint to it here. I'm going to go ahead and use SCNR. Open that up here. And what this will do is remove, if you have the color to remove, selected to green, it'll remove some of that green tint and kind of make it a little warmer. I don't want to remove all the green out of the image, so I'm going to set this down to 90. I'm going to drag and drop that and watch what this does to that image. 
See how that made that a little bit warmer and removed that green tint? It just has a more natural look to it. All right, now that I'm satisfied with my galaxy only image, the colors and everything, can now work on the stars. And really all I'm going to do, there's two processes that I'm gonna do on the stars. First, if I zoom in and we look at certain areas, you can kind of see, it's hard to tell, but there is a little bit of green uh, around the edge of these stars on some of them, some of the brighter stars. Yeah, kind of. you can kind of see it's a yellowish green color. So I'm gonna run SCNR, open that back up, drop this down to 90, and drag and drop that on there. And as you can see, that helped clean that color up just a little bit, kind of give them more of a natural color. I'll widen back out. And speaking of color, the only other thing I'm going to do to this is open up curves. Again, make sure we reset it. And I'm going to bring just a little bit of color into these, star, in, into these stars on, under the saturation tab. And just bring just a little bit. Again, you can always do too much. So just a little bit of color into the stars. All right, with my stars done and processed, now I'm going to go to Pixel Math. And I always like to create a new image, that way if I don't end up liking it, I can, you can always undo it, but that way all I gotta do is just X out of it and I can kind of make any other changes that I need to in their respective um, panels here. So for this, I'm just gonna enter in Galaxy plus stars and that'll combine these images back together. And there we go. There's my completed image here in PixInsight. Zoom in. Lovely colors on the galaxy itself. The background's pretty, kind of got that, not completely black, just a nice little bit of kind of uh, gray to it. You can see plenty of other galaxies here in the image. And these bigger stars have some nice color to them. But the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image. We're going to call it M101 uh, to edit. And I like to call it to edit because I'm going to now save this as a TIFF file. And as a 16-bit TIFF file here. And then I'm going to send it into Photoshop and finish off a little bit more editing on it. All right, I've now moved my image into Photoshop, and as much as I like PixInsight, and it's a great tool and has lots of features on it, I do like to finish out my images in Photoshop. I find it a little bit easier to use the adjustment, adjustment layers uh, to make some final color correction uh, in my photos and trying to get that final look that I like. So the first thing do, I'm gonna do is go down and create a new adjustment layer with uh, color balance. And it's, it might not translate onto your screen as well. And again, all of that's gonna depend on your color calibration of your monitor. But I can see here in the, the space, here in the black of the space, it does have a little bit of a slight warmer yellow kind of a tinge to it. And I prefer my images to be a little bit more cooler. So we can get rid of that and uh, of, this, of this kind of yellow here in the background of the, of the uh, of space by just adjusting these tabs as fit as see as we see fit here obviously I can add too much blue into the image I don't want it that cool but and, and as you can see here I can add a lot more yellow so I'm going to just increase my blue in the shadows all right so yeah, this a few slides of the of these uh, sliders here, and again, you can see how much that changed the image. Kind of a reddish yellow background, kind of gets rid of that right there. All right, the next process in Photoshop that I'm going to use is the camera raw filter, and for those of you that have used either well Photoshop or like Lightroom, this is very similar here to um, when you first bring your images into Lightroom or excuse me, Photoshop, you can use the camera raw filter to give them those initial edits 
or uh, these are very sim this is a very similar process of just editing in Lightroom. And this makes it easy to add a, a few final touches to your image. Like I can, for example, drop the highlights here or adjust them as needed. I don't really need to do much with these. Don't really need to bring up my shadows any. I'm pretty happy with that image. The only thing I might do, let me zoom in here. I might, I might use the brush tool and make some small changes to my highlights, just localize them here with the, with the brush tool. Make this a little bit smaller. And as you can see here, now I can adjust exposure or adjust the contrast a little bit as needed. Uh, you don't want to do too much because then you run the risk of it'll kind of have a halo effect to it. I might just bring the highlights down, I mean, just a, ever so slightly here, just so that that center of that galaxy kind of pops a little bit more without being overblown out. So that's enough with that. Uh, the next process I'm going to use is I might add just a little bit of clarity. Don't want to, again, don't want to do too much here because if you, you can crank that up way too much add just a little bit of clarity you might just add like a two or three not going to run any texture because again that will end up bringing that noise up in the background I will increase my vibrance a little bit as well as my color saturation and one other thing I like to do is add just a little bit more detail in the image if you hear the bell walking around, that is my cat. He's come to uh, make his presence known here on YouTube. You can hear his, his bell ringing. And the last thing I'm going to do here is color noise reduction. And he's eating now out of his bowl. I guess we all got to eat. I'm going to add, put that to 15, and you'll see how that corrects that little bit of color noise that we still have left. So with that, I'm just going to hit OK. Well, actually, real quick. I will probably fix the distortion of this just a little bit. I'm going to push this up to one. This will fix that little bit of barrel distortion that my um, telescope has. Put that to there. You can see the little bit difference that it made. I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to do a final crop because I had to, since I distorted those edges here. But there we go. There you have it. There's my final M101 pinwheel galaxy edited image. Tico approves with, with his bell. If we zoom in here, you can see Lots of structure and detail in the galaxy. Some other smaller galaxies, all these here in the frame as well. So yeah, that's just another quick processing video on how I edit my photos in PixInsight and in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll have more processing videos and more astrophotography videos here in the near future. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video.